nice mind. You're my boy, aren't you? Come on, Corky! You're my girl, aren't you? Yeah. Aren't you forgetting something? Speck's a good friend of yours. Don't be jealous, Mike. I love you just as much as I do, Corky. And I got a piece of carrot for you. But you're gonna have to hunt for it. Which hand are you gonna put it in? Well, I don't dare tell you. He understands everything I say. He wouldn't understand if you spell it out to him, would he? I don't know. He's plenty smart. Go ahead and try it. Okay. It's in my L-E-F-T. H-A-N-D. Attaboy, Mike. I told you he was plenty smart. Gee willikers, I didn't think he knew how to spell. He almost knows everything. <coughs> What's the matter with her, Jimmy? Oh, she just wants us to see her puppies. Come on. Gee, they're sure cute. I'll say they are, and smart, too. You know, their grandma earned a thousand dollars a week in Barterville. A thousand bucks a week? Gee whiz. What are you gonna name them? Well, I already have. This one here is a Corky Boy. This one here is... Yeah, this one's Corky Queen. This one here is uh, King Corky. This one is Carquita. Gee, they're sure swell names, Jimmy. I'll say they are. Well, Speck, we've got to be getting to work. You take the rest of the harness and the cart down to the shed. I'll go get Mike. Okay, Jimmy. Come on, Corky. Thanks a lot, Miss Dolan. Thanks, Mom. Such hard-working men as you and Speck need lots of food. You're tops, Mom. Oh, did you saw another pup? Two of them, I think. I took deposits on King Corky and Corkita. Oh, boy, that means I'm $35 closer to Dawn and Mike. Hot diggity dog. Now, you boys be careful when you cross the railroad tracks, won't you? Yeah, we, we will, Mrs. Dolan. All right. Bye, Mom. Bye, boys. Come on. Go, Mike. subscription for you. Jay Spencer, 388 Durango Road. Well, that's the old Dalton horse training farm near where I live. That's right. It's been leased to Colonel Whitley, the famous Kentucky racehorse breeder. Now you know who Spencer is, don't you? I'll say. He trains the Colonel's horses. Right. He and the Colonel just arrived with a big string of thoroughbreds for the opening of the new racetrack being built over at Santa Anita. I suppose you've been over to see the new track. You bet we have. And it sure looks like we're going to have some top-notch racing this winter. You bet we will. <laughs> hey, Corky, how did you get down here? Jimmy told you to stay up there and watch Mike. That's not Corky. That's my dog, Mickey, Quirky's brother. 
Gee willikers. They look so much alike, I can't tell them apart. They're getting dumber every day, Speck. Now you've done it. Oh, it wasn't any good anyhow. Nothing we have around here is any good. We ought to buy us a Joe Lewis professional punching bag. Yeah, and what are we going to use for money? Now listen, fellas. If everything goes okay, I'm going to enter Mike and the Santa Anita races. When he wins enough purses, I'm going to buy what we need for a real for sure enough clubhouse. With gym equipment that ain't busting all the time. We can have a shower bath and a ping pong table and weenie roasts. What's the matter with you guys? Don't you believe it? Well, it sounds twelve, Jimmy, but well, how do you know Mike's going to win any races? Yeah, how do you know? Well, you just wait and see. Yeah, you guys just wait and see. Oh. You boys looking for someone? Yes, sir. Either of you gentlemen, Mr. Spencer? I am. I'm your newsboy, Jimmy Dolan. This is Beck Williams, my assistant. This is Corky, my dog. Glad to know you boys. You too, Corky. Where do you want your paper delivered? In the mailbox or at the house? Just throw it on the porch of the guest house here. Yes, sir. You better deliver a paper to me too. You can put it on the porch of the big house. I'm Colonel Whitley. Thanks, Colonel. I know a lot about your racing stables and your Kentucky horse breeding farm. You do? Yes, sir. Did you bring your handicap champion with you? Yes. How do you happen to know so much about my racing stable? Reading about Sport of Kings is one of my hobbies. Would you mind if Speck and me comes over once in a while and watch you train your bang tails? Well, I won't mind so long as you keep out of the way. I don't want any kids getting hurt on my property. Thank you, Colonel. Better set your alarm clocks, boys. We start working out the horses pretty early in the morning. <laughs> Here, Corky, deliver that on my front porch. Gee, Speck, we can come over here tomorrow. It's Saturday. Yeah. We can bring Mike along, too. He can learn a lot by just watching the Colonel's horses. You bet he can. Come on, Corky. Atta, girl. Let's go, Mike. So well, that's your kid brother. Yes. But for heaven's sakes, don't let him know you used to be a donkey or he'll pester the life out of you. Okay, Aaron. Is that the thoroughbred you were telling me about, the one he's buying from his uncle? Yes. And that subject's taboo, too, or you'll be spending the evening out in the stable. Hello, Mom. Hello, dear. Well, this is home sweet home. It's just like I thought it would be. Mother, I want you to meet Mr. William McKay. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. McKay, and welcome to our home. Thank you, Mrs. Dolan. It's a pleasure to meet you. If you'll excuse me a minute, I want to have a private talk with Jimmy. That's a very good idea, Aaron. I'll be right back. All right. Won't you come over here and sit down, Mr. McKay? Thank you. Oh, my. He's a good fella. Now you get yourself some dinner. Hey, Jimmy, who's Aaron's new boyfriend? I don't know anything about him except that he sells insurance. Say, maybe I can sell him one of Corky's puppies. Sure you can. With him mice around Aaron, it ought to be a cinch. Hey, Jimmy, it's past 6 o'clock. I got to go home. OK, Specs, see you at 4 a.m. What's this 4 a.m. business? Gee, sis, I got two new customers, and who do you think they are? Who? Colonel Whitley from Kentucky. And he's trainer, Mr. Spencer. That's swell. Beck and me are going over there in the morning and watch him run his horses. Oh, boy, are we going to have fun. At 4 o'clock in the morning? Sure. Gosh, but you're dumb. Don't you know they work out race horses before breakfast? Well, never mind that. Now, listen. I don't want you to spoil my date this evening by talking horses. And don't try to show him Mike, either. Well, what can I talk about? Nothing. Mr. McKay is calling on me, not you. 
Can I have you show him Corky's puppies? I was hoping to sell him one. No, not this time. And if you keep your lips buttoned all evening, I'll give you a dollar. It's a deal. Oh, go and get cleaned up and get the stable smell off your hands before you meet Mr. McKay. Okay, sis. Jimmy, this is Mr. William McKay. Glad to meet you, Mr. McKay. It goes double, Jimmy, only don't be so formal. I'm known as Sandy to my friends. Sandy? That's funny. A jockey named Sandy McKay used to ride for the Elm Tree Stables of Maryland. That's right. That's me. Really? Sure. Oh, boy, have I met a lot of racing big shots today. Jimmy, remember our deal. Okay. Now, the next time you come over, you and me have got to get together for some horse talk. You bet we will. Make it soon, will you? Sure thing, Jimmy. Swell. Dinner's ready. And am I hungry? <laughs> Here comes Mr. Spencer. Good morning, boys. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Spencer. Spencer. You're early birds, I see. Yeah, we didn't want to miss anything. I'm going to make a tour of the stables. Like to go along? Well, we'd love to, but maybe Colonel Whitney wouldn't like it. He won't mind if you're with me. Come on. No, Cork, you stay here and watch Mike. Understand now? That's a fine dog you have, Jimmy. He minds what you say. Well, that's because she's a thoroughbred. <laughs> Thoroughbred, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Wait a minute, Hank. This is the Colonel's pet, Lightning Boy. Hi, old fella. Sure, I know. You want to get out and run, don't you? All right, you're going to get a workout this morning. Go ahead and pet him. He loves it. Hello, champ, old boy. Gee, ain't he pretty? <laughs> yeah, almost as pretty as Mike. <laughs> okay, Hank. Come on, fella. That hugs them. The nicest sprinters you'll ever see. I like them real well. What's the matter with him? There's hmm? nothing wrong with him. He's just taking a bath. A bath? Yeah, a sand bath. <laughs> oh, Doc. I'd like you to meet a couple of friends of mine. This is Doc Scott, our veterinarian. Jimmy and Specs. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Doc. Glad to know you boys. <laughs> well, come on, fellas. Morning, Mr. Spencer. Good morning, Blackie. Gee, them sure funny-looking horseshoes. They are horseshoes. They're racing place. Oh. <laughs> the young man's a walking encyclopedia of racing information. <laughs> he sure is. Not many people know what horses wear on their feet when they race, boys. Maybe I've got a couple of discarded plates you give the boys for luck, huh? I sure have. Have you got any kicking off a lightning, boy? Got a lot of them. There you are, Sonny. Much obliged. Gee whiz. Thanks a lot, mister. You're welcome. Well, we better be getting over to the track. Hey, would it be all right if I take Mike and Corky over to watch, too? Sure, that's all right. Come on. How you want the boy handle this morning, Colonel? There's only one way to work him. If he wants to run, let him. Yes, sir. You fellas will stay right here. You can see everything and not be in the way. Okay, Mr. Spencer. All right, boys, up to the starting gate. Gee, he's a swell fella, ain't he? I'll say he is. Oh, boy, now we're going to see some real racing. Not so loud, Speck. Over there's Colonel Whitley. I wonder what makes him look so grouchy. I don't know. Bring Mr. Mulligan here. Well, I see that Flying Son and Mr. Mulligan are up to their old tricks. Yeah, but they're not as bad as they used to be. You'd better consult an Oculus, Jay.
come around that turn. What time did you get? 49 and 4 fifths. I got 50 flat. Bad after the long train ride. It's not good either. Oh, boy, Colonel Whitley sure has good-looking horses, and fast, too. Oh, they're pretty good. Here come Mr. Spencer now. Enjoying yourself, boys? You bet. I'll say. What do you think of our racing stock? Well, they're pretty good, but... But what? Well, I don't want you to think I'm bragging, but I'll bet you Mike can beat any I've seen so far. Did you say Mike? Who's Mike? He is. He's Mike. Well, what makes you think that delivery wagon horse can beat my thoroughbreds? Just because Mike's been helping me deliver papers. Don't get the wrong idea, because he's just as much a thoroughbred as any of your horses. Oh, he's no thoroughbred. He is so, because my uncle bought him and he knows race horses. Well, we'll have to put Mike on our track one of these days and see what he can do. Show me one of your saddles and I'll show you what it can do right now. <laughs> well, I will. All right, my horses will race yours. Good. Come on, Speck, let's unhitch. And just so you won't say I took an unfair advantage of you, I'll have a set of racing plates put on your nag. That's swell. <laughs> Don't let him get your goat, Jimmy. Well, he can't call Mike and nag and get away with it. I know. You just bring him over to the stables and we'll fix him up. Okay, thanks. This call of yours sure acts like he wants to run. Of course he does. You would, too, if somebody insulted you. You don't really think he can beat any of the Colonel's horses, do you? With thin racing plates on, the Colonel's horses won't be able to see him for dust. <laughs> okay, Sonny, ready to climb aboard? Just a minute. Corky, you stay with Speck and watch the race. I'm ready now. Okay, Mike, let's go. Come on, Corky. Uh, Jimmy, Colonel Whitley wants to discuss the conditions of the race with you. Okay. Will once around the half-mile track be satisfactory? It's me. Suits me, too. Now, you riders will be given a few minutes to warm up your mounts. Why, the kid sits his saddle like an experienced jock. Yeah. And maybe his nag can run like an experienced racehorse. Oh, Mike. Now listen, Mike. After my bragging on you, don't you dare let me down. You've got to win this race, understand? Get him straightened out there. Come on, Mike. I'm a son of a gun. Jimmy's colt is leading lightning boy. Come darn near beating, Lightning Boy. So I notice. Not bad for a delivery wagon horse, don't you think? You don't have to rub it in. <laughs> don't feel bad about it, Mike. It wasn't your fault. You could have won that race if I was a better rider. Congratulations, Jimmy. For what? Your horse beat mine, didn't he? By the skin of his teeth. Well, that's good enough in a horse race. I guess I did a little bit too much bragging. You didn't do half enough, Jimmy. The horse that beat Mike was last year's three-year-old champion. 
You don't mean lightning, boy. Yes, sir. Look there. Gee whiz, did you hear that speck? <laughs> sure I did. He made boy run a half a mile in 47 flat. Did you hear that, Mike? You nearly beat lightning, boy. Think of that. Jimmy, I owe you an apology, and Mike, too, for calling you a delivery wagon horse. I hope you'll forgive me, both of you. We will, won't we, Mike? How about being my guest for breakfast? You bet. That'd be swell, Colonel. Come on over to the house. Hey, Joe, pull the boy's horse out, will you? Come on, then. And Mike was bred by a Texas sportsman, Stephen Talbot. Steve Talbot, huh? Do you know anything about Mike's bloodlines? Yes, sir. Mike was sired by Bulldog and pulled by a mare named Molly Michael. As a yearling, he was registered under Bull Mike. But I shortened it because I like Mike better. I don't recall any Bull Mike racing as a two- or three-year-old, do you, Colonel? No, I don't. That's because he's never been to a race. You see, when he was a baby, Mr. Talbot gave him to his daughter for a pet. And when she was killed in an auto accident, he couldn't bear to have Mike around his place. Oh, yes, I remember the incident now. Talbot was so brokenhearted, he quit racing and sold all his stock. Yes, sir. That's how my uncle came to buy him. Well, you're a very lucky boy, Jimmy. You could sell Mike for a lot of money. Oh, I don't want to sell him. I'm buying him for keeps. I wouldn't sell Mike for a million dollars. <laughs> Mail to me, dear? No, Mother, just one letter. It's for Jimmy from Uncle Joe. Good. Open it up. Let's hear what he has to say. Oh, Jimmy won't mind. All right. Dear Jimmy, I regret very much that circumstances compel me to break a promise, which no doubt will hurt your feelings. I am so desperately in need of money that I am offering to sell Mike. Sell Mike? Go on, let's hear the rest of it. I am offering to sell Mike to the Kit Kat Racing Stable. And they will be over to see him tomorrow. As they can afford to pay me $700. There's the old alibi. He knows Jimmy can't afford to pay $700. I wouldn't let him pay that much if he could afford to. Go on. Don't feel too bad about it, because I'll find you another colt you'll like just as much as Mike. With love, Uncle Joe. With love, Uncle Joe. A lot he knows about love. Oh, why did he ever leave Mike in Jimmy's care in the first place? He might have known that Jimmy'd become attached to him. Oh, Mike. Here, Speck, you drive down to the shed and start unhitched. I want to tell Mama about Mike. Oh, I suppose Jimmy will just have to get over his disappointment. Mom, Mom, guess what happened? Mike nearly beat Lightning Boy. What's the matter, sis? Why are you crying? What's the matter with her, Mom? She's feeling blue over a letter from your Uncle Joe. Oh, is he sick or something? No, dear. Jimmy, I've got some bad news for you. And it's going to hurt you terribly. Oh, I wish I didn't have to tell you. But you'll have to know about it sooner or later. Well, what is it, Mom? Your uncle is so hard up, he can't wait till you've saved up enough money to buy Mike. You mean he's going to sell him to someone else? Yes, dear. To a racing stable. But Mommy promised me that I could buy him. I know, dear, but... Then why can't I send him the $203 that I have saved and the rest later? Because the racing stable will pay him $700. And that's a lot more than you can afford. So that's got up and ugly turned out to be. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy. You can depend on me, Mike. I'm not going to let nobody take you away from me. No, sir. We'll run away tonight. You and me and Corky and join up with the gypsies. Nobody will be able to find us. Now, listen. I'll sneak out here around midnight. And we'll... Oh, Jimmy! Yeah? Supper's ready, and Mom's fixed some nice French fried potatoes. And you know how much you like them. I don't want any supper. I'm not hungry. 
Don't be like that, Jimmy. I feel almost as bad about losing Mike as you do. Only... Only what? Well, maybe we've been getting upset over nothing. What do you mean, nothing? The men coming over here tomorrow have never seen Mike, have they? No, I guess not. Well, maybe when they see him, they won't want to buy him. I think you got something there, sis. Did you hear what you said, Mike? Maybe they won't think you're worth $700 when they see you. place where Joe Dolan has a thoroughbred for sale? Why, yes. Well, I'm Sam Hilder, and this is Dr. Pronit. How do you do, Mrs. Dolan? Do we know? represent the Kit Kat stables. I presume Mr. Dolan wrote you about the deal? Yes, Jimmy got the bad news from his uncle yesterday. Jimmy's my 12-year-old boy, and he loves that coat more than anything in the world. Well, now, I'm sorry if we've butted in on a family affair. All I know about the matter is that Dolan offered to sell a four-year-old coat to our employer. Do you mind letting us have a look at him? No, come with me and I'll call Jimmy. Thank you. I know how much this hurts your pride, but I don't want to lose you. And you don't want to get taken away from me and Corky, neither do you? Of course not. Now, if you just stand still, I'll be through in a minute. so dirty looking, but every chance he gets, he wallows in the duck pond. That's a fine way for a thoroughbred to act. Yeah, I guess he's got some Mustang in him. How long has he been limping like that? Well, not long. It comes and goes. I think he's got a touch of rheumatism. Well, you better look him over, Doc. He'll make it snap, you know. You're wasting much time. You're right. <laughs> Quiet, Corky. It's all right. I've seen all I want to see. Me too. Let's go. Well, thanks, Jimmy, for letting us see him. You're welcome. Well, goodbye. So long. Bye, Jimmy. We fooled him, Mike. We put it over on him. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Corky. I was only fooling to trick those men. And did we put it over on him? That boy, Mike. Come on, I'll clean you up. Let that old dirt off of you. Come on. Believe me, Mrs. Dolan, I feel like a heel coming here to take your boy's pet away from him. Especially after the clever way he tried to fool us. But I'm only carrying out orders. That's why I waited till he'd be in school. Well, I... I'm at least glad you waited. We have the confirmation of purchase here if you care to see it. No, that isn't necessary. You'll find Mike in the corral. Well, I... I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. Dolan. Corky, stop it. Stop it, Corky. Come here. Corky, come here. It's all right. It's all right now. Thank you. I'm going to hurt 
Got your mark. Nothing we can do about it, Corky. I know how you feel. Steady, boy, steady. Oh, oh my. Oh, oh my. Oh. Come on, come on. Oh, come on, boy. Steady, Mike. Steady. Oh, oh, boy. Easy now. Easy. Come on. Oh, Mike. Oh. Steady there, Mike. Oh. That's right, boy. Oh. Oh. Hey, Jimmy, what's she tied up for? I don't know. But I got a pretty good idea. I'm tired, Speck. Jimmy, ain't Mike out in the pasture? No, Speck. They took him away. Come on, Corky. What are we gonna do, Corky? Don't feel too bad about it, Jimmy. You can buy another horse. I don't want another horse. If I can't have Mike, I don't want any. And I'll never speak to my Uncle Joe again as long as I live. I don't blame you, Jimmy. I wouldn't either. Come on, Mike, old boy. You know how good these carrots are. How about some nice corn, Mike? Sure, boy. Have some of that corn. Come on, Mike. What's the matter with you? Haven't you been able to make him eat yet? No, Mr. Remain. You can't make a horse eat if he doesn't want to. We've offered him everything we could think of. Oh, here, let me try. It's no use, ma'am. He won't eat. He won't run either. He just sulks. Well, perhaps I'd better call in another veterinarian. You don't know what to do for him. The coat isn't sick, ma'am. I mean, not physically. Then what's the matter with him? He's grieving for his stable companion, a little old dog named Corky. That's the truth, ma'am. Well, that ought to make our problem quite simple. We'll buy the dog. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to do the buying. I won't. Why not? Because a little boy named Jimmy Dolan owns that dog. And he thought this colt was his, too, until his uncle crossed him up. Oh, I see. Very well. Give me his address. I'll talk to him. Well, he lives over in Arcadia, on Durango Road. I'll write it down for you. Yes, Jimmy Dolan. That's me. I'm Kitty Tremaine. You mean the movie star? That's right. I came here to buy a dog. You must have seen the sign I put out in front. Well, I got two puppies left. If you come into the barn, I'll be glad to show them to you. Oh, but I don't want to buy a puppy. I uh, want to buy this dog. She ain't for sale. But I'll give you $50 for her. No, you won't. Well, $100? No, ma'am. How about $200? You're just wasting your time, lady. And besides, what do you want to buy this dog for? Well, you see, I happen to be the owner of the Kit Kat racing stables, and I... Oh, you are, are you? Now I see what you're up to. You're not satisfied with taking Mike away from me. Now you want Corky, too. But, but Mike doesn't want to eat since I got him because he misses the dog. Of course he does. Don't you think me and Corky miss him, too? I'd just as soon die if I didn't have Corky. Oh, Jimmy. Since you won't sell Corky to me, I guess there's just one thing to do. 
I'll have to sell Mike back to you. Do you really mean it? Would you sell him back to me? I'd be happy to. Oh, boy. That's swell of you. Now, if you wait right here, I'll be back in a minute. Now, don't go away. Why, hello, Jimmy. Hello, Colonel Whitley. Is Mr. Spencer around? It's very important that I see him right away. Well, I'm sorry. He went to Los Angeles this morning. I'm sorry you lost Mike, too. Jay told me about it. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see Mr. Spencer about. You see, I got a chance to buy Mike back again. You don't say. Yeah. You see, he won't eat or run or do anything for the Kit Kat Staples, because he's lonesome for me and Corky. Oh, I see. Well, why don't you come along and tell me about it? Maybe I could help you. I'm afraid not. Why? Well, you see, the Kit Kat Staples paid my uncle $700 for Mike. Well, I haven't got that much money. And I was sort of hoping Mr. Spencer would win partners with me in buying Mike. And if he could train me, I bet you Mike would win plenty of races. Well, I'm sure glad you told me about that. You are? Why? Because if Jay was here, he'd uh, jump at a chance to buy a half interest in Mike. You really think he would? I know he would. Oh, gee, I wish he were here. Well, that isn't necessary. I'll just give you my check for $700. Then when you and Jay get your money together, you can pay me back. How's that? Gee, but you're a swell guy, Colonel. I'll be your friend for life. <laughs> here comes Mr. Spencer. Oh, Jay, I just made a deal for you with Jimmy. Hmm? Oh, for a half interest in Mike. You'll never regret it, Mr. Spencer, because I'll bet you anything Mike will win the Santa Anita Handicap if you train him. But I thought your uncle sold him to the Kit Kat stable. He did, but a miracle just happened. We got a chance to buy him back. You see, the Kit Kat can't get Mike to eat or anything because he's grieving for Jimmy and the dog. So I'm advancing the money to you boys to buy him till you can pay me back. Oh, I see. Well, that's very fine of you, Colonel. And I'm glad to have you for a partner, Jimmy. Thanks. That's the way I feel about you. Allow me to be the first to congratulate the new partnership of Dolan and Spencer. I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, Colonel. Thanks a lot, boss. Well, I gotta be getting along now. Miss Tremaine's waiting for me. Then I think Jay better go along and help close the deal. Besides, you'll want to discuss your racing plans and select your colors and so <laughs> forth. Here you are, Jimmy. Thanks, Colonel. You're aces. Well, come on, Jimmy. My bike. Well, leave it here. We'll pick it up later. Okay. Doc Scott wants to see you in the stables, Colonel Whitley. What's the matter, Colonel? Got something in your eye? Yes. A little boy's gratitude. I'm sure glad you're home, Mike. You know it, too, don't you, boy? Boy, you ought to have seen how glad Mike and Corky was to see each other. And you know something? Corky must have told Mike that we'd come to take him home because Mike went right up to the manger and started to eat some hay. What do you know about that? I don't know why dogs and horses should be called dumb animals. I don't either. I've seen plenty of them that were much smarter than their owners. Hiya, Mr. Spencer. Remember me? Oh, yeah. Hello, McKay. Jimmy, I want to see you, man. Yeah, sure. I got to go home, Jim. I'll see you later. What's wrong with him? Oh, it's an old story. Is there anything wrong, Mr. Spencer? What's that ex-junkie doing around here? Oh, he's my sister's boyfriend. Oh, so that's it. Yeah, why'd you ask? Did he ever ride for you? No, but... Uh, but what? Confidentially, partner, he lost his jockey license for riding in a questionable race. Oh, I see. Well, I've got to run along. See you tonight. Okay, partner. Mr. Spencer, I want you to know how much I appreciate the kindness that you and Colonel Whitley have shown to Jimmy. I think it's wonderful. It's been a pleasure, Mrs. Dolan. Colonel Whitley and I think Jimmy is a fine boy. In fact, the Colonel is a much changed man since he met Jimmy. Before you go, I'd like to give you a jar of my homemade jam. Well, I'd love it. I, I hope it's strawberry. Good. <laughs> Sandy. I think you ought to speak to Mr. Spencer. Evidently, he thinks the suspension of your jockey license was justified. Well, why should I explain to him? He means nothing in my life. Don't be so sure about that. He's Jimmy's partner now, and Jimmy has big plans for you. 
big plans for me. What are you talking about? I don't dare tell you. I've been sworn to secrecy. All right, I'll find out for myself. Okay. It's a swell homecoming for Mike, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, Aaron tells me you need about 125 bucks yet to pay for your half interest in Mike. Yeah. I'd like to lend you the money, Jimmy. No, thanks. I'd rather not borrow any money from you. Why not? Did you ever ride a crooked race? No, I never did. You had your jockey license suspended, didn't you? Yes. Why? Well, back east, I happened to be up on a favorite in a race that a gambling ring was using for a betting coupe. I should have won that race. I was pocketed all the way. The stewards thought I was in on the fix. I was so mad over the raw deal they handed me, I never offered any defense. I just quit the racing game. That was a mistake, Sandy. But for some reason, I believe you. And I'd sure like to have you ride Mike at Santa Anita. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm, I'm way overweight. I know that, but you can train down. Other jockeys have to. Yeah, but I might have trouble getting reinstated. No, Colonel Whitley can fix things up for you, I bet you. Yeah, I guess he could at that. Sure he can. What do you say, huh? Well, what do you say about that $125 loan I mentioned? Okay, I'll speak to Mr. Spencer about you tonight and get everything fixed up. Right. But, Jimmy, McKay never offered any defense. Is that the kind of man you want to ride, Mike? But he didn't do anything wrong. Nobody could get him to throw a race. No, sir. All right, partner. If you think he's okay, I'll put in with you. Thanks. And you won't be making any mistake, neither. Because, well, you see, he's going to be my brother-in-law pretty soon. Oh, so that's the way it is, huh? Yes, sir. Well, let's take a look in the condition book and see if we can find a race that Mike will have a chance to win. Good. Hmm? Let's see. Ah, here's one. Opening day. Third race. Four years old and upwards, an allowance affair for maidens and non-winners of more than one race this year. And the distance is right. Yeah, only six furlongs. Michael win that one in a breeze. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. But don't forget, other owners will be reading these conditions too and figuring how they can wake up a winner. I know it. Come in. Well, if it isn't Sam McBride. Hello, Hi, Sam. Sam. How are you, boys? I saw you in the diner and tried to catch your eye. Heading west for the opening of Santa Anita, huh? Yeah, uh, California, here we come. Me too. Strings already on the ground, working out. Is that so? Yeah. Sam Rice meets a swell layout, and the track is faster than Greed Lightning. Figure on copying the first hundred grand handicap? Oh, now, quit your kidding. You know me better than that. What's up your sleeve, Sam? What's it worth to you to know? If it's a sure thing, what have you got? You remember that gilding I claimed at the fairgrounds last year? You mean Speed Demon? Yeah. <laughs> Why, that old hay burner only won one race this year. Well, it's more profitable sometimes not to win races. <laughs> you gentlemen ought to know that. So you've been prepping Speed Demon for a killing? Huh? And how? He's been working the half at 49 and just galloping. I want you to notice the conditions in the third race. The opening day. Three quarters of a mile. An allowance race for maidens and non-winners of more than one race last year. Four years old and upward. Speed Demon can take that one running backwards. And he should pay at least ten to one. Sure enough, it says Mike. Well, he wanted me to tell you when he was ready to run. Well, he is. But is he ready to win? That's what we want to know. He's a cinch. Then you would advise us to bet the bankroll on him? No, I don't advise anybody to bet on horse racing, because I don't believe in it. Oh, I see. But if you feel like betting, don't let me stop you, because being a maiden, Mike will pay off in boxcars when he wins. Joe, get that bookie on the phone. I've got two dollars that's going on Mike. So get it straight. Five grand on Speed Demon in the third at Santa Anita. Attract odds. Speed Demon. Five grand on the kisser. We'll thank Louis Bookies will take it. 
I said speed demon. S is in sucker. P like in plater. Yeah, that's it. Now listen, Mike. I want you to get a good night's sleep. Because we're going to van you over to the track early in the morning. And I want you to be in the pink, see? Now listen, Corky. I want you to keep a good watch over Mike tonight, understand? I got something for you. Here. Atta girl. Good night, Mike. Good night, Corky. Blaine Duck, by a half. Sweep him out as second and closing fast. Bright Willie is running pay. Blaine Duck wins it by an egg. Well, it's all very exciting, but when does Mike run? The next race. See here on the program, Mother, number six. That's the number to watch. My brother's horse. Now do exactly what Sandy tells you, Mike. And whatever you do, you've got to win this race, understand? Any final instructions, Mr. Spencer? No, you know what to do, so go out there and do it. Okay. Good luck, Sandy. Thanks, Jimmy. Any instructions? No, just go out there and win that race. That's all I got to say. I'll do my best. Best-looking horse on the track. Hey, Sandy! Be sure to make Mike win! You're rooting for the wrong horse, Sonny. What do you mean, the wrong horse? If you want to pick up a little easy money, you get a ticket on Speed Demon. Speed Demon. Mike's gonna win this race. Mike, with Sandy McKay up, is 50 to 1, and little sure Sam, look good with Charlie Sloan up, us. is 3 and a half. Hey, fellas, there's Jimmy. Where? Down there with Mr. Spencer by the judges' stand. Oh, yeah! Come on. Oh, I'm beginning to see how it's done. <laughs> That's why they have the numbers on the board out there. Look, Ma. The odds on Mike are 50 to 1. I'm going to buy a $2 ticket. Do you want me to buy you one? You mean if Mike wins, you'll get $100? That's right. I'll take two. One for Jimmy. Horses are in the starting gate. There they go. Number two, Speed Demon is going to the front. Molly O is second. And Sparrow is third. Speed Demon by three quarters of a length. Molly O is the head and front of Sparrow. Lumi Gus is running sixth and Mike Speed Demon by a length and one half. Molly O on the left. Speed Demon still in front by one leg. Molly O is second in front of Sparrow. Speed Demon and Molly O. Sparrow is third and little Sam. And here comes Mike closing fast on the outside. It's Speed Demon and Mike. It's Mike and Speed Demon. Mike wins going away. And Demon is Nice going, Sandy! I knew you could do it! Sonny boy, let me ask you something confidentially. How did you know that horse would win? Because I told him to! What does that have to do with it? You see, I'm Jimmy Dolan of Dolan and Spencer. This is Mr. Spencer, my partner. We own Mike. <laughs> Come on, Jim. Come on, boys. That's a honey. I'll say it is. 
But there's nothing too good for that, champ. Mm, you bet there isn't. <laughs> oh, look what I got for Corky. Well, Corky. Say, that's a mighty fine collar Jimmy bought you. Nicest one I could find. You like it? Oh, that's a Jim Dandy. <laughs> After being such a good dog, Corky, old girl. Jimmy, I came over to tell you that I've entered Mike in another race. You did? When does it go? Week from today in the Lincoln Memorial. A handicap. Oh, boy, you must think he's pretty good to enter him in that kind of a race. <laughs> It'll give us a chance to find out how good he really is. He'll be stretching out from six furlongs to a mile and a sixteenth and running against better horses. How much is a purse? Enough to outfit your newsboys club if he wins. Oh, boy, did you hear that, Mike? Do you really think he can win, Mr. Spencer? Well, he's got a chance, but don't count on it too much. Few horses win all their races. Colin didn't. Or Mondy didn't. Maybe Mike can do it, too. <laughs> I wish I had your kind of faith, Jimmy. Training horses would be so much easier. <laughs> well, we'll put him back into training right away. So long. Bye, partner. Mr. Spencer don't think you can win the mile in the 16th race. But you'll show him, won't you? What if it is a Lincoln Memorial handicap? That won't make any difference to you, will it, boy? Nah. And here's some info right out of the feed box. They're everything you can beg, borrow, steal on Fleet One and the Lincoln Memorial Handicap. Signed, Doc. Let's say, who's Doc? Remember the veterinarian we staked at Saratoga after they bought him from the track? You mean Doc Slagle? That's the guy. His brother Bill works for the B&B stables. They're the ones that own Fleet One. Say, that tip sounds pretty good. Let's take a look at the entry. Knighthood, Scotsman, Domino, Fire Eater, Fleet One, Nominee, Sweep One, Mike, Mike. That lets me out. I won't do any more betting against that kid and his horse. Once was plenty. Oh, don't be a dope, Winter. The kid throws us in over his head. He's right. Probably putting him in a handicap just for experience. He won't get any more experience at my expense. No, sir. That kid's the jinx. Uh, you're too superstitious, Wendy. As for me, I like Fleet One. Say, do you think you can get the doc and his brother over here? I'd like to talk to him. Sure, the doc will do anything for me. Hello? Hello, Doc. This is Ace Carroll. Well, how are you, Ace? You got my letter, huh? Yeah. Bill will be in from the track tonight. I'm expecting him any minute. Yeah, well, get, get yourself over here to the National Hotel, Suite 608. I've got a little job for you. Okay, boy. I'll be seeing you. Goodbye. Poor Corky. I'm sorry you don't feel well. But this medicine I gave you will fix you up. You'll feel swell in the morning. Now you go to sleep like a good girl.
you hurt bad. Set your head down. They've shot Corky. Where's Jimmy? Over there. Poor Corky. Mr. Spencer, Corky's been shot. Oh, uh, don't worry, Jimmy. Doc Scott will take care of the bird. What about Mike? Is he all right? I don't know. Well, we'd better find out. trying to do to you, Mike, old boy. Plenty, I guess, if it hadn't been for Corky. Still full. Good thing they didn't get a chance to use it. I'll say it is. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I tried to save her, but, well, I, I couldn't. She's dead. You should feel mighty proud of Corky, Jimmy, for she sacrificed her life to save Mike's. That makes Corky a hero, and heroes don't want their loved ones to cry over them. I'm not crying. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Hello, Mr. Spencer. Mom said you wanted to see me. Is there anything wrong? I'm afraid there is. Mike won't eat, and he won't train. He seems to be grieving for his pal, Corky. Mm. Well, what are you doing with that dog? We thought maybe Mike was lonesome for a stable mate, but it didn't work. Mike won't even look at him. Of course not. No other dog would take Corky's place. I know. You're right. And besides, around home, he'll be closer to court. That's right. We'll declare him out, huh? It's the best thing to do, Jimmy. Anyway, there'll be plenty of races for him later on, huh? See who it is, Jack. Hi, Doc. Hello, Bill. Hi, Jack. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Doc. Hello, Doc. Hi, boys. Hi, Doc. Good word. Well, Wendy, we just came over to collect the rest of our money. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, here's proof that the kid's horse won't run. The number of probable starters in the Lincoln Memorial Handicap to run on Saturday was reduced to nine today when Dolan and Spencer declare their entry Mike. <laughs> Good work, <laughs> Doc. What did I tell you?
I'm not blaming you for not wanting to race yesterday. I know you feel bad about Corky. But so do I. Now I'll put you out in the pasture where you can get some good sunshine. Jimmy. Hello, Mickey, old boy. I came over to say goodbye to you, Jimmy. What do you mean, goodbye? We're moving to New York tomorrow. To New York? How come? My dad got transferred to another job, so we've got to go where he goes. I'm awful sorry you're leaving, Junior. So am I, because my dad won't let me take Mickey along. He won't? No. So I thought maybe, maybe you'd like to have him. No, Junior. Thanks just the same. But I couldn't bear to have any other dog around after what happened to Corky. <laughs> Do you suppose he thinks Mickey is Corky? Nah, but maybe he remembers that Mickey is Corky's brother. Maybe he does at that. Well, what do you know about that? How much you want for him, Junior? What I paid for him, 15 bucks. It's a deal. Wait right here while I get the dough. All Lightning Boy needs is a tightener, and he'll be ready to go. Okay, Jay. Hello, Colonel Whitley. Hello, Jimmy. Mr. Spencer. Well, what are you excited about, Jimmy? What's happened? A miracle. A friend of mine brought Corky's brother over to my house, and Mike has accepted him for a pal. You ought to see how they're romping together. Just like old times with Corky. Well, that is good news. Sounds like Mike's ready to go back into training. You bet he is, and that's just what I've been hoping and praying for. I know you have. So if he trains well, we'll start him in another race. Which one? Anyone you say, partner. Just name it. Uh, how about the San Juan Capistrano Handicap? Oh, that's an awful tough race, Jimmy. I'm afraid we can't get him ready in time for that. Sure we can. We got two weeks, and that's enough for Mike. He'll be as sharp as a tack in that time. Well, it's... Okay with me, if the Colonel has no objections to Mike being coupled in the entry with the Lightning Boy. I welcome the competition. But don't forget, it won't be the first time Mike's tried to beat Lightning Boy and failed. That's right. But this time, you've got to beat Dolan and Spencer, too. <laughs> oh, boy, Mike and Lightning Boy. What a race that's going to be. Any special instructions, Colonel? Yes, Bobby. Just take this horse off the pace. But don't be more than two lengths off the leaders. When you hit the seven-eighths pole, take him to the outside. He'll come on from there. And whatever you do, don't let Mike beat you. Yes, sir. Now listen, Mike. I'm depending on you. So go out there and win this race. Understand? Now, Sandy, just judge your pace for lightning, boys. Stay close to him. When he makes his move, you make yours. Yes, sir. And good luck to you. Thanks. Don't worry about Mike and me. We'll be right up there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the first running of the San Juan Capistrano Handicap at a mile and one quarter for three-year-olds and up. The field going postward in this event brings together Colonel Whitley's champion of last year, Lightning Boy, and the South hey, American horse, Gennaro. Lightning Boy is coupled in the betting with Mike. Jimmy Dolan's sensational four-year-old, that newspaper man affectionately referred to as the Great Mike. The horses are on the track. Number two, Yanero, the South American champion, is the favorite at eight to five. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Yes, indeed, Colonel Whitley. It was very nice of you to invite us to sit in your box. Yeah, it was swell of you, Colonel. He wants us where he can keep his eye on us. <laughs> Four against one, you know. <laughs> the horse are nearing the starting gate. Don't be so nervous, Wendy. That newsboy cold isn't going to jinx us today. Ah, there's too much class in this race. Besides, he was out of training too long. Yeah, just the same. I wish he wasn't in it. Lightning Boy is acting up. But there he goes in the gate now. We should get a break at any moment. 
There they go. Yanero is going to the front. How do I know? It's second, and Grand Rush is paid. Passing the stand the first time, it's Yanero in front by one length. Grand Rush, Red Moon, and Lady Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Come on. Mike. Around the clubhouse turn, it's Yanero in length and one half. Red Moon is second. How do I know? Is they. In the back stretch, it's Yanero by one length. Grand Rush. How do I know? And Blue Lily. Lightning Boy got through on the rail and is now fifth. It's Yanero, Blue Lily, Red Moon, and Lightning Boy. Round the far turn, there goes Lightning Boy. It's Yanero, Red Moon, and Lightning Boy. Where's Mike, Mr. Spencer? Where's Mike? Right where we want him, at Lightning Boy's here. Turning for home, Yanero is still on top, but Lightning Boy is challenging for the lead. And here comes the great Mike on the outside. It's Yanero, Lightning Boy, head and head. Let's go, Mike. It's Lightning Boy and Mike, head and head. Lightning Boy and Mike. Mike is the winner. Lightning Boy, Red and Blue Lily. I'm awful sorry. It had to be you, Colonel. Nice work, Sandy! Yes, sir, that's right. We want six dollars professional punching bags, six pairs of gloves, two ping pong tables, one wrestling mat. And don't forget about the baseball equipment. Take it easy. And we want a lot of baseball equipment. And when I want something more, I'll call you back. Bye. Gee whiz, that gym equipment sure is going to cost an awful lot of money, ain't it? Sure it will. But we don't care how much it costs, do we, Jimmy? Of course not. Do you know how much Mike won on that race? No, no how much? much? Oh, about $45,000. $45,000? bucks. Jump in Jupiter. Yeah, and we're going to have the best newsboys club there ever was, ain't we, Jimmy? You said it, Speck. Hello, Jimmy. Hiya, partner. You're just in time to help us plan on building up our new clubhouse. Well, that's fine. Brought you a present from Colonel Whitley for the new club. Oh, swell. Thanks a lot. What is it? Open it and find out for yourself. Okay. What is it, Jimmy? I don't know. Why, it's a picture of mine. She is pretty. It sure is. Hello, Miss Dolan. Now, Mr. Spencer. Look, Mom. Look what Colonel Whitley gave us. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Thoroughbreds. Oh. Isn't it swell, Mom? <laughs> <laughs>